Sadu, a disgusting-looking weakling, gets dominated by a bunch of brookies desperate to buy the half-priced bento. However, things change when a bob-cut baddie takes him under her wing and turns him into an alpha male who is able to dominate all the brookies and riz any hotties in his way. But before this, Sadu lived an ordinary life apart from the fact that he was almost blown apart by a landmine and was chased once by the subway surfer guard for not paying for the train. Currently, he is lying on the floor all beat up but manages to get up and be on his way when he notices a white hair baddie staring at him from afar. Nonetheless, she walks away while Sadu decides to buy something for his rumbling stomach. After exiting the store, he wonders what the girl was saying and the only thing that enters his mind is her waiting to get clapped. The thought of making use of his rusty tool makes the poor lad faint while another nerdy girl witnesses all of it. The next morning, Sadu is on his way home from the hospital when the nerd named Hana talks to him and seems disappointed that useless garbage like him is still burdening Earth. The two of them then walk together and Sadu mentions that the hospital management was eager to kick him out as they knew a brokey like him could never pay the bills. Turns out Sadu had already met Hana yesterday but didn't remember anything due to the accident. Instead of being disappointed, Hana is excited that he can throw away the past like that and continues her walk to school. At the campus, the two of them notice the white hair baddie named Sen but by the time he remembers her, Hana is already gone. Sen tells him that she is the only one who throws away trash in their club and tells him to stay away from that supermarket he visited last night when Sadu asks her about it. Following that, Sadu tries to check some ladies through a roll when he notices the class president staring at him. He mispronounces her name, resulting in him receiving a slap from her. He then asks her about Hana and thinking that Sadu most likely tried to get inside her pants. She slapped him once again. After school, Sadu visits the mart before going to his dorm but gives up after seeing the pocket change in his wallet. There, Hana appears and the two of them enter the mart where he notices Sen and the fact that ready-made food is currently half the price. But before he can grab any, the other customers jump on him which leaves the poor lad on the floor again. While he is unconscious, he remembers what happened on the first day when the manager wakes him up as the store is about to close. Before leaving the manager warns him about the bento he is about to purchase, and advises him not to mock the bento in front of the public or things could go bad real quick. The next morning, the class president questions Sadu's relationship with Hana and repeatedly slaps him when he doesn't answer. After school, the two of them decide to visit the supermarket once again and prepare themselves for when the bento goes on sale. Just as the manager puts the sale tag, the war zone begins and everyone starts to fight for the victory royale. Sadu decides to join the war as well and while he is getting clutched, Sina joins in, making Sadu figure that she is the so-called Ice Queen. In the end, Sadu doesn't get any bento and Sina advises him to visit her club if he wants to survive the bento war. The next day at the club room, Hana enjoys the sensation of Sen's plot and then the two of them are forced by her to sign the club application for the half-price club. Now that they have joined the club, Sen begins their first lecture about the marts where they are most likely to run into losers instead of buff dudes. This might allow them to begin the bento hunters who are also known as wolves. That night, the two of them wait for the manager to leave and soon after, the brawl begins. Nonetheless, he continues to fight but eventually fails and decides to visit the next supermarket. There, they meet the bald guy with a bright head than Satu's future. Just then, a fatty named Bor tries breaking the rule and both Agohige and Buzu try to stop her. However, they fail and she starts taking all the bento and later forces the geezer to put half-price stickers on them. Having no other choice, the normies give up and end up buying cup ramen instead. Furthermore, the two of them also enjoy sharing cup ramen that they could afford after combining their funds. The next day, Sadu is once again questioned by the hot president, Yume, about his relationship with Hana. In the end, she slaps his sorry self and concludes the interrogation with a kick in the nuts. During club time, Sadu mentions that Hana won't be coming as she was knocked out and kidnapped by Yume earlier. Later that night, Sadu finds out that the store will be stormed by rugby players and it'll be almost impossible to get any food due to them. Nonetheless, all of them decide to give up and leave the store when an emo boy enters the store while giving Sadu a side eye. Eventually, Sadu decides to buy some ramen again but the playboy they call Wizard reminds Sadu of his goal to become a wolf. This motivates Sadu to fight the whale but she easily tosses him aside. She then charges towards the wizard but he easily manages to dodge her, making the boar crash into the shelves. Following that, the old man finishes putting the stickers and leaves, which results in the brawl to begin. The wizard easily manages to take care of them while Sadu gets his shit handed to him until the three of them return. The all-out brawl continues and Sadu is forced to fight the three musketeers as well. 
On the other hand, Sen also manages to grab a bento after defeating all the newbies. Eventually, Sadu returns to school where he finds Sen waiting for him. She congratulates Sadu on his first chicken dinner. Additionally, she notices the sticker on his bento and mentions that it is the one marked as special and Sadu might make it big if his first win was this big. He informs Sadu about the wizard and according to Sen, the wizard is a senior at their school named Yu and goes on to put the sticker on Sadu's bento in the record book of their club. With that being said, they prepare to eat dinner and Sen forces Sadu to show some manners and thank the person who made the bento before devouring it like an unethical caveman. The next morning, Yum strips Sadu in order to find his cell phone but Sadu reveals that he forgets it at the dorm. The weeb comes up to Sadu, advising him to savor this feeling to the fullest. Later, he visits the club, crying about how his pathetic plot was exposed for all the baddies to look at. Luckily, Sen agrees to fix the buttons that Yum tore off and Sadu waits in his military patterned armor. Hana on the other hand takes this chance to click some pictures for her OnlyFans page while Sen informs them about the sushi bento that is quite valuable. Eventually, she gets pissed seeing him distracted and throws his uniform out of the window. Just then, Yum visits the club room, announcing that she has become part of the student council, and mentions that they will be picking up trash from the school grounds. Sadu rushes to retrieve his uniform and ends up jumping into the incinerator. Elsewhere, a group of boys discusses the Ice Queen recruiting two new members and plans to take both Sadu and Hana in their own pack before they get too deep with Sen. After sustaining some injuries, Satu is on his way to the supermarket with Hana where they run into one of the boys from that group named Yamahara. He invites them to join their hunting pack and Satu ends up agreeing to join it as a trail. As soon as the brawl begins, the hunting pack members keep the normies aside, allowing the pack members to grab Bento easily. While enjoying dinner with the pack, Yamahara once again asks Sadu if he wants to join it officially but his two brain cells still need some time to think things over. After they leave, the pack members discuss how they were a bunch of wimps while Sadu informs Sen about everything that happened. Additionally, the bento didn't taste as good as it did when he fought for it the first time. Sen then begins eating her bento and the two greedy dogs request to have some as well. Luckily, she agrees, and Sadu enjoys eating from the same chopsticks that touched a maiden's lips. For the time being, Sadu continues to work with the hunting pack and enjoys acquiring easy bento until he gets bored. He reminds himself that the stronger his opponent is, the more he enjoys doing something. Following that, he enters the supermarket, and this time, instead of taking the free bento, Sadu begins pushing aside the hunting pack members, saying that a bento's no fun if one can easily obtain it. This results in Yamahara throwing hands at Sadu followed by an all-out brawl. In the end, Sadu manages to punch Yamahara but just when he is about to grab a bento, Yamahara's teacher, Kenji, stops him. Nonetheless, this allows Hana to easily grab a bento, making the two of them go home. Yamahara tries going after Sadu but Kenji tells him that Sadu doesn't have the eyes of a dog like them but the eyes of a wolf. The two of them return to the school, making Sen proud of their achievements as she gives him the keys to the club room as a reward. A blonde beauty named Ayam fights all the nerds to secure the victory, and later finds herself in Sadu's bed. She is surprised to see all the magazines he has stashed away. She then reminds Sadu about being his cousin and pins him down, only to disappoint him by getting off. The two of them then spend the evening playing games until Ayam gets hot and spicy, allowing Sadu to get a feel of her talents but being a Sigma, he restrains himself. Following that, he meets up with Hana, requesting a girl's uniform from their school for Ayam. He then returns to his dorm only to find Ayam with Hana and Sen. Turns out Ayam is a famous wolf named Lady of the Lake and she challenges Sen for a bento fight. Ayam then begins teasing the poor nerd at places where the sun doesn't shine until she runs away, allowing them to check her search history. But Sadu ruins the fun and soon after, Yum appears and notices Ayam <laughs> Hana once again. In the end, Yum releases her tension by kicking Sadu in the face and later taking Ayam away. At night, Sadu is on his way to the supermarket where he runs into Ayam, wearing a wedding dress. Apparently, after kidnapping Ayam, Yum forced her to film a video and later made her wear this dress. Nonetheless, the two of them enter the mart where they meet Sen who seems to have the same target in mind as Ayam. Soon after, the fight begins and Ayam takes care of the side characters while Sen takes down the rhino. The two of them then begin fighting each other and eventually, Sen manages to land a brutal blow on Ayam. However, she gets back up and decides to lock in. The fight continues and this time, Ayam begins pressuring Sen. Sadly, she gets dusted once again by Sen. Meanwhile, Sadu gets into a fight with a corny-looking dude and eventually manages to defeat him. 
After the battle, Ayame invites Satter to eat with him but he plans to eat in the club which makes her disappointed and leaves. Sen forces Satter to go after her and he apologizes to Ayame in person. After finishing the food, Ayame makes sure to give her cousin a long hug. Elsewhere, the corny boy named Ren is given orders to his higher-ups to keep watching Sadu and his gang for the time being. At school, Ayam is waiting for Sadu who seems to be in the teacher's room as the teacher suspects him of trespassing. Meanwhile, Ren is keeping watch on them and notices Sadu running away from the creepy teacher, and accidentally drops a leaflet with the name of the store he plans to go to next. Eventually, he calls Ayam and asks for some clothes while he hides from the teacher until Ayam takes him to her room and makes Sadu wear a girl's uniform. She continues to make fun of him for being a cross-dressing weirdo. Following that, Ayam asks Asabai to buy them some juice and after she leaves, warns Sadu not to be around Asabai as she is the beacon of bad luck. He doesn't believe her until Ayam pulls out the trusted charm that turns black because of Asabai's aura. Later, they decide to leave and notice Asabai still struggling to buy overpriced Red Bull from the vending machine. Just then, the teacher once again appears and Ayam distracts him which allows Sadu to reach the supermarket. There, everyone notices Sadu's cross-dressing kink, ultimately getting disappointed. Following that, Sen informs Sadu that they are on a wolf's turf named Monarch and soon after, Ayam also arrives questioning them for being in his turf. However, Sen replies that the only reason she is there is to take advantage of the sale happening at the supermarket as they discussed beforehand. After some time, the store manager arrives to put the stickers and everyone gets ready for the battle. Afterward, the brawl begins and all three of the girls manage to grab themselves bento apart from Sadu who is stopped by Ren and his gang. He mentions that they are loyal puppies of the monarch named Gabriel. Just then, the monarch appears and smashes Sadu down to the ground, calling him Sen's pet. He continues to beat Sadu and doesn't stop even when Sen tries to negotiate. In the end, Sadu wakes up in the manager's office with a morning wood. She reminds Sadu of how pathetic he looked until the girls arrived to check up on him. They informed Sadu about what happened and brought some spare clothes for him. Sen notices the wound on his leg and tries checking it out while Sadu tries his hardest to hide his meat. However, Ayam ends up noticing it and just then, Hana arrives and witnesses them in a questionable position. Later, Ayam informs the others that the monarch plans on raiding all the marts in the west as he is pissed over the fact that a powerful wolf from the east lost to one from the west. As Sen begins to think of a counter plan, Ayam decides to leave as she is an eastern wolf, fully aware of the fact that she could be a target of the monarch as well. On the other hand, the store manager meets up with her former rival, Yu who informs her that he will be visiting Thailand to let loose and have some fun. Elsewhere, Sen and the others are at a park where she informs the wolves from the west about Monarch's plan. Furthermore, she plans on raiding Monarch's base while he's busy raiding the western markets. Ayam is also told by an eastern wolf that it was the store manager and wizard who got into a battle, and when even the wizard ultimately won, he didn't have the strength to make it back home. Currently, Monarch plans on taking revenge for his predecessors and wants to be known as the strongest wolf. As he calls himself the manager's successor, Monarch plans on defeating Wizard's successor. Later that night, Sadu prepares himself for another battle when Ayam appears and takes him away. She informs him about Sen being Monarch's target and Sadu tries to warn Sen, but she doesn't pick up his telegram call. The two of them then visit a spot where Sen fought and later make their way to the store where Monarch is present. Meanwhile, the store manager asks Ren about their plans and begins despising them after seeing the condition Sen is in. She makes her way to Monarch and just when he is about to hit her, Ren stops him, reminding Monarch that he can't become Kiku just by inheriting her name. But he pushes Ren away and forces Kiku to put the stickers on the bento. Just when the battle is about to begin, Sadu and Ayam enter the shop. Ayam calls Monarch some curse words she learned from Reddit the other day, and with that being said, the three of them get ready to fight Monarch's henchmen. Ultimately, they begin fighting the henchmen and Sen uses this chance to attack Monarch and begin her battle. Ayam decides to assist Sen by landing some hits. This results in him losing his mind and trying to hit them with the shopping cart. Nonetheless, Sen manages to punch him in the guts and the three of them work together to bring the muscle head down to the ground. After defeating the Eastern Wolves, Sen takes her bento and walks away, leaving Sadu and Ayam to fight for the last one. Outside, Sen runs into Hana who mentions that they kept their turf secured. Soon after, Sadu walks out with Ayam after securing the dub. Simultaneously, Ren wakes up in Kiku's office and is advised by her to live freely, 
and not go obeying the rules of a wannabe bento thug. Meanwhile, Sadu and the others enjoy eating the bento together and after finishing up, Aim falls asleep on Sadu's thighs. Sen mentions the fact that Sadu might have an alias like the pig-looking wolf, making him excited to become the person deserving of that title. Aim gives everyone tickets to Disneyland that she got from Kiku. Sadu realizes that he might get to see baddies in swimsuits and agrees instantly. With that being said, all four of them are on a train to Disneyland along with Kiku who decided to join them. Sadu remembers all the melons he might get to see, making him even more excited. Eventually, they arrive at the amusement park and the girls make Sadu carry all the bags while Ayam notices that he dropped one of the tickets and someone would need to pay. As expected, Sadu is the one who is forced to buy the tickets and coincidentally runs into Ren. While changing in the dressing room, both the boys hear the girls discussing their plot armors, resulting in Sadu wanting to somehow get a sneak peek. After leaving the dressing room, Sadu gets to lay his eyes on all the thick visible thighs. Nonetheless, he gets to have a ton of fun playing in the pool with all the hotties until they take a break. There, Sadu asks Sen about her alias and finds out that it comes from a picture of her holding an ice cold drink with a bento. He then asks I am the same question and Ren answers it for her, saying that she once fell asleep on a bench in Lake Park after eating her bento. Soon after, the announcement of the bento sale is made, making Ren realize his pocket change won't be enough for a full price bento. Coincidentally, the three musketeers along with the bad luck bandit also arrive at the park. Sen informs everyone that the park will be selling half price bentos as well and after having a look at the bentos, they realize that some of them are not available at their neighborhood markets. Soon after, the homeless-looking dolphin appears to place stickers on the bento and puts them in the swimming pool. As soon as he leaves, everyone jumps in the pool, and the all-out brawl begins. Chapatsu begins calling Sadu a creep which is the new alias that Ren gave him. During the battle, Chapatsu's top falls, forcing Sadu not to look as it'll be hard to battle while being bricked up. Aim uses this chance of confusion to target Sadu. Meanwhile, Ren goes for the melon-looking bento, only to be knocked out by Sen who gets the dub. Following that, Sadu goes away which makes Aim think that only she and Agohige are left. But it turns out that Sadu plans on using the water pressure to quickly make his way towards the bento, and everyone else starts swimming towards it as well. In the end, Sadu manages to secure the bento and accidentally does the I Show Speed Classic in the phase of excitement. This results in the appearance of Yum who kicks him for displaying that tiny little thing. Afterward, Sadu along with Sen and Aim enjoy their bento and it only gets better when Sadu gets to experience the cliché hand feed from Sen. In the club room, Sen and Aim are playing Tekken, and Sen gets absolutely dusted by both Aim and Asabai, forcing her to challenge Sadu in the end. But even he manages to beat her which results in her throwing the console out of the window, making Sadu jump after it. Elsewhere, both the twin sister and the president and vice president of the student council are tired after a meeting with old-aged boomers. Back at home, they decide to infiltrate the hospital by wearing a nurse cosplay. Their main goal of visiting the hospital is to look for Sen. Meanwhile, she is at the hospital along with the others, visiting Sadu who is turned into a mummy after the accident. Ayam begins teasing the poor Egyptian mummy and almost reveals his alias to Sen which is something he doesn't want. All this commotion makes the nurse kick the girls out of Sadu's room but Sen decides to stay with him for a while. Surprisingly, she apologizes for breaking his PlayStation 1 and agrees to make up for it by sending him a picture of her rice cakes. Meanwhile, the sisters remember the first time they got to see the Ice Cold Witch and discuss the fact that she defeated the monarch, making them curious about how well she performs in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Back in the present, one of the sisters visits Sadu's room to place a camera. Apparently, they think the person covered in bandages is Sen and in order to calculate Sen's height, she lays down next to Sadu. Afterward, the other twin sister enters the room and begins measuring his body by lying on top of him. The two of them continue to take turns and make Sadu's wildest dreams come true until Ayam pays him a visit. She teases Sadu about the new bento before leaving and one of the sisters gets on top of Sadu, confronting him for taking such insults head on. Elsewhere, Ayam tells Sen that Asabai's family runs the hospital and she asked them to put all those bandages on him even though he isn't even hurt that badly. Sadly, the twin sister has to get off of Sadu when the real nurse appears and asks her to replace Sadu's bandages. Nonetheless, she begins removing his bandages, thinking it is Sen until the bricked up tower reveals itself, causing her to run away while Sadu chases after her. Just then, Asabai comes running with hot milk and accidentally spills it on Sadu. The twin sisters finally find out that the person they mistook for Sen is actually the wolf that goes by the name of a creep. 
Later that night, Ayam notices the twin sisters leaving the store with Bento after defeating all the normies. After school, Asabai decides to make a Bento for Sadu, and Ayam, knowing how wrong it could go can only wish him luck. While she works hard on the Bento, Sadu gets roasted by Yum once again. Later that day, he enjoys playing pirated Street Fighter while Hana annoys him regarding the bruise on his cheek. Sen brings him some ice for it and simultaneously, Ayam and Asabai also arrive with the homemade bento. After taking a look at it, Sadu seems excited until he takes a bite, making him realize that the food is straight up from First We Feast's YouTube channel. The poor lad struggles to eat it and is forced to finish it all. Elsewhere, Yum is shown a video of Sadu running around in his military pattern underwear and is requested to give an apology. However, Yum replies that Ayam is a student at the twins' school who trespassed into her school without any official channel and requests an apology from them as well. After the meeting, Yum tears apart the apology letter while the twin sisters cry and hug each other after having to look at such a barbaric girl like Yum. That night, Hana is finishing up her light novel when Yum video calls her. During their conversation, Hana accidentally spills coffee on her 10 inches laptop making her freak out and eventually drop the video call. Sometime later, Hana wakes up and finds Yum on top of her who apparently changed Hana's clothes while she was asleep. Following that, the two of them decide to eat the bento that Yum made and she makes sure to hand feed Hana. With that being done, Yum gets straight to the point and takes off Hana's clothes, ready to get hot and spicy until she notices the magazine with buffed men lying on the floor. The next morning, the fat weeb tries to sell a blue film to Sadu and accidentally drops it in front of Yum. She starts off by slapping Sadu and questioning him about the magazine she found yesterday with his loser face pasted over those buffed men. Sadu tries to tell Yum that Hana is the culprit but she slaps him once again, not believing a word he said and leaving the poor fellow on the ground. The twins visit Ayam in her club room, asking her about the club activities. They want her to fill in the details in the form as she will be summoned to talk about it later. Nonetheless, she writes about all the dating sim games they play and later notices Ren calling her out. Elsewhere, Sadu is forced to pay a hefty amount for his treatment earlier, and exits out of the hospital, noticing a queue outside the mart. At the same time, Ren informs Ayam about a new wolf that goes by the name of Orthros and how all the other wolves don't have the balls to go against him. Apparently, the only thing Orthros victims get to see before being beaten to a pulp is that Orthros is a duo. Later that day, Ayam invites Sadu to fight at an eastern mart but he already has plans to go to the Kamishita mart as advised by Sen. The next day, Sadu visits the Kamishita Mart where he comes across the twins. Soon after, Ayam also visits that mart and finds Sadu lying in a corner. Afterward, he wakes up with Ren and Ayam on his side, explaining that he most likely fell victim to Orthros. Elsewhere, the twins are taking a bath and mocking Sadu for being a bigger wimp than they thought. The next day, Sadu visits the club room and reads about Orthros being a dog with two heads. Sen wakes up and advises Sadu to take his time getting back on his feet after the accident. Following that, Sen suggests doing it together at night and crumbles his hopes by letting him know that she means visiting the mart together. That night, the two of them visit the mart where Ayam is already present. Turns out Saitama and his partner are also there for bento hunting. Surprisingly, the twins appear out of nowhere and apologize for going a bit too far last time but Sadu doesn't seem to remember anything. After formally introducing themselves to Satu, they walk past them, giving everyone chills. Soon after, the brawl begins and Sen along with Ayam and Satu begins dominating the field until the twins begin overpowering everyone. Sen, being the only one left, fights the twins on her own and struggles to keep up with the two of them. Eventually, everyone figures out that the twins are the ones called Orthros. Ayam tries to join the battle only to get dusted by their supermarket basket art. Ren also assists only to meet the same fate. Luckily, Sen manages to land a kick on the twins' face and Sadu lands the next attack. The two of them team up only to be defeated in the end. After the battle, the twins mock Sen and leave a basket on her head. Before the twin sisters leave, they are questioned by Ren about their motives. This results in the sisters giving him their contact information to inform him about their next target. The next day, the sisters are overjoyed regarding the fact that they got to beat such a strong opponent like Sen and managed to secure the bento. This reminds them of when they used to be nosy brats with the goal of becoming the strongest wolves. One of them regrets calling Sadu a chicken head loser and plans to apologize to him the next time they see him in the supermarket. The next day, Sadu is on his way to school with Hana until Yum kidnaps him which goes unnoticed by him. At school, Sadu runs into an E-cup baddie who lets him know that Sen didn't come to school as she is out cold. After school, Sadu visits Sen's apartment and she invites him inside. 
Sen takes him to her room and seeing her bed makes him have some clapping thoughts. Nonetheless, Sen reassures Sadu that she wasn't strong enough and will make sure to win next time. Furthermore, she plans to go for the eel bento during the next hunt, and wants Sadu to make the twins come to that market as well. At night, Sadu is at the mart with Ren when the sisters arrive and apologize to Sadu for calling him a wimpy shithead. However, the other sister calls an emergency meeting and after that, they switch up their acts and begin mocking Sadu once again. Soon after, the manager leaves and the battle begins. As expected, they lose again and later meet up with I Am who informs them that the loaded geezer who runs the popular Sonic Supermart is the twins' father. Even though he is tasked to inform the twins about the eel bento, seeing the bald hitman makes Sadu change his mind and he asks I Am to convey the message. After receiving the message, the twins get excited over the fact that they will get to fight the witch once again. Elsewhere, Sadu visits Sen and is furious, seeing her in a worse condition than she was yesterday. She asks him to buy her some medicines from the pharmacy. Meanwhile, Ren is at another supermarket, trying to dig for information on the twins. He gets to know that the twins used to be famous in that specific supermarket as well until they were driven away by the Club of Heracles. The next morning, the leader of Heracles arrives in town. The bento sale will be in a few hours until then, Sen decides to get some sleep in order to be ready for the hunt. The sisters are getting ready for it as well and are a bit anxious thinking about the Club of Heracles. Elsewhere, the three musketeers notice Sadu standing in front of the mart and later running away. Soon after, Aim and Ren enter the supermarket and later, the twins also arrive. Just then, the Club of Heracles comes in front of the twins and asks them to leave. However, the twins refuse and the Club of Heracles replies that he will make sure to drive away Orthros. Furthermore, he asks them about Satu, wondering if he left because of his strong aura. The Club of Heracles asks the other wolves to help him make the Orthros go away, and reminds the sisters what happened last time. Apparently, he made all the other wolves avoid fighting the sisters and continued the fight after they took the bento, leaving them out of the fun. Just then, the manager appears with the stickers and the Club of Heracles suggests the sisters take the bento and leave. But just when they are about to leave, Sadu enters the mart and walks past the twins, informing I am and Ren about Sen struggling with her time of the month. Eventually, the sisters also decide not to run away like last time and face the Club of Heracles face on. As soon as the manager leaves, the Club of Heracles tells the twins to take their bento. Ayam tries to step in but Sadu stops her and reminds all the wolves waiting for the twins to take the bento by making them hear his stomach roar. This makes everyone motivated and the brawl begins right away. All the wolves start to regret going with his plan while the Club of Heracles decides to join the fight as well. Sadu decides to take him on. With the help of Ren and Ayam, he puts him down like the dog he is. This encourages the twins to join the fight and the brawl continues. After everything concludes, they all enjoy Bento outside the mart except for Sadu who goes to scold Sen for skipping the hunt. Turns out he took his Bento to Sen's place and they decided to enjoy the long slimy eel together. This was all about the Bento hunters. Do you think Sadu will ever acquire enough aura to bag Sen? Comment Bento below if you enjoyed the show. Make sure to like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.